Hello, everyone. This is Melinda Stewart from HL7, your host today. This session is Patient Consent Management and Medical Research with FIRE. Our speakers today are Martin and Stefan, and I'm going to turn it over to them. Hello, and thanks for the short introduction, and thanks for the invitation to present here today. And of course, a quick hello to the German FIRE community joining us from the FIRE Dev Day satellite event in Berlin. And that's uh, even from me, um, who is actually sitting in Berlin, in a side room, <laughs> not with the audience at the moment. Uh, I'm the one uh, who's trying to answer the questions, and uh, Martin will be the one trying to get to you what we uh, invented using fire in the con um, um, using consent resources and some other stuff. So, Martin, I'll be doing the paperwork and you'll be doing the talk. I do my very best. Um, I'm a research associate and computer scientist working at the University of Medicine Greifswald in Germany. Um, my daily work comprises consulting and implementation of data protection measures and medical research projects, focusing on topics like pseudonymization and consent. Um, I'm a co-founder of the HL7 Germany working group Consent Management. And as Stefan already said, I represent the professional part in our working group. Stefan Lang is a fire trainer and senior consultant. He works at Gefira in Germany and He's a fire expert. He is an author of several fire based implementation guides and co founder of our working group. He brings his extensive experience as a specifier to our working group. The working group Consent Management was founded in 2018 in Germany and consists of representatives of HA7 Fire and IG a provider of an open source solution in the area of consent management, as well as lots of representatives of all four consortia of the medical informatics initiative, the so so-called MII. More information you can find in our German project wiki or in the implementation guide. In Germany, the use of medical data for research purposes requires an informed consent of the patient. And it should be compliant with the European General Data Protection Regulation. Starting point for our working group was a certain lack of technical interoperability when it comes to the technical representation of the patient informed consent. So, different technical approaches within the wider IHE HL7 FIRE community for consent management exist. What is consent management? Um, consent management comprises the definition of module and structured consent templates, the documentation of the field patient consent, as well as the automated consent enforcement. So our goal was it to specify unified Firebase profiles for modular consent templates and to enable an improved mapping of consent content with Fire. But what exactly is a consent template? Typically, it's a version consent template. It has a header, it has several assigned modules. Um, additional items may be a photo text. It is based on a simple template document. Consent modules represent selected sections of the template. For example, to ask the patient for consent for data processing of his or her data, which might be accepted or declined. Each module groups a certain set of consent policies, which represent specific and detailed actions to be allowed by the patient. After the patient has inf been informed about details of data processing within a specific research project, he or she signs the consent based on the template for a specific research purpose. And this electronic document filled and signed by the patient is electronically documented and results in queryable consent policies for a simplified consent enforcement. In this way, 
questions such as may the data collected be shared for research purposes can be answered automatically. Fire questionnaires play an essential role when it comes to fire-based modular content management. The profile template module represents constant modules which are reusable, um, containing questions and links to constant policies. These modules are merged into project or task-specific structures with the help of the template frame. A questionnaire composed is then generated from the definitional artifact of the template frame, which can be processed and displayed by any questionnaire renders, for example. The data entered into questionnaire composed are stored fire compliant in a questionnaire response. And based on these information, the structured and if necessary, machine processable fire consent resource is generated. But um, of course, in principle, it is possible to implement only parts of this in an individual implementation. In total, we specified 10 profiles, nine extensions, three value sets, and two code systems um, with FHIR to cover all necessary aspects for a maximum interoperability of existing technical concepts. So I will try to give a simplified overview. As already stated, the questionnaire response references to a renderable content template, the questionnaire composed, which is derived from a version content template frame, which includes several template modules in terms of sub-questionnaires. Based on the accepted and declined consent modules specified in the questionnaire response, the automatically processable fire consent resource is generated. Electronic signatures of the patient or educating persons can be depicted using provenance resources. Available scans of a paper-based consent document might be stored with the help of document reference resources. The patient, as a person concerned, must of course also find um, his place in this concept of fire resources. Um, a fire patient profile has been devised, the consent patient, for reasons of data protection. It completely eliminates demographic and medical data. This is a very important. This variant of the patient resource usually identifies the patient by means of a pseudonym and it is referenced accordingly by the other resources, as you can see in the figure, um, in order to maintain the personal reference. At the same time, the consent is usually collected in relation to an institution or a research project. This can be mapped in FHIR using organization or research study resources. So to sum it up, we achieved our goal. Today, our specification of profiles, extensions, value sets, and code systems is freely available. The solution concept enables the required convergence of the modular consent approach, IHE, and FHIR consent. In order to better understand the complexity of these concepts, we created an implementation guide with numerous examples, explanations, and illustrations. This implementation guide was successfully balloted in Germany in September 21 and is now available in the first stable version as standard for trial use. Our results form the basis for ongoing work within the German Medical Informatics Initiative. The MII aims for strengthening medical research and improving patient care. And it is funded by the German Federal Ministry of Education and Research with about 300 million euro. A very special feature here is that all Germany university hospitals play an active role in the MRI. The central element 
um, in this project is the MII, MII broad consent. For this reason, all profiles and examples presented in our implementation guide have already been oriented comprehensively at MRI use cases. At the same time, during the profiling process, of course, attention was paid to common applicability of the profiles independent of MRI and with openness for future implementations. Nevertheless, there are, of course, MRI specifics that have that have no place in general content profiles. So based on our prior work today, the MRI core data set module consent is developed. Of course, there are already first implementations. Um, the open source consent management geeks um, is the first solution supporting these new fire consent profiles and all related resource types. Geeks supports the modular consent template concept, as well as the documentation of paper-based consents and withdrawals, as well as um, electronic consents. Geeks is based on web services and provides comprehensive support for queries on the status of consent or patients. So please feel free to use our demo. Of course, um, I not only have information on current developments in Germany, but also a small handful of questions that I would like to address today to the international community. Um, first, do you see a need for an expansion of our German implementation guide to an international version? And second, who would like to participate in our international work as, as a follow-up? That's it. Once again, thanks for the invitation. And if you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch with us. Yeah, also, thank you from me, uh, from my side. Um, I think we're supposed to answer one question we have on the uh, Hoover uh, app currently and i intentionally uh, left that for you martin because <laughs> the question is um if i may read it uh, EU, eu has published the ehds proposal what are your thoughts on it and have you already taken that into consideration in mii um so this is specifically about uh, mii um, so this is a question I'd rather not answer because I'm not that deeply involved into MRI and you are probably more uh, specific, specifically in the uh, task force consent. Maybe it's a question I have to do some <laughs> research first <laughs> or to speak with a colleague. I would take it with me and um, answer it afterwards if possible. Okay. The questions will remain in Whova, so you can always log back in and answer those later, yes. Yeah. Great. So that's currently nothing we can answer at the moment. Any more questions? You can post your questions in the Q&A, but you can also, if you're um, online, you can raise your hand or unmute yourself and ask a question. Well, I've raised my hand and I'm muted myself, so I'll ask a question. Um, <laughs> This is Hugh Glover. I'm technical director for the, the Vulcan Accelerator. Um, and I really responding to your question about interest in using this internationally. Um, I have thought several times that Vulcan might be interested in doing a connectathon track on consent. Um, we thought about consent from the, the perspective you're talking about it, but also um, some of the other ways in which it might get used. Um, for instance, if you've got a set of historic data, who is allowed access to that historic data separate from the individual patient consents, but the owner of that data giving consent to, to get access to that. So, that might be a bit um, 
off piste for what you're looking at, but I think I would like to follow up on the thought of maybe doing a, a connectathon track at some point if you'd be interested in participating mm. in that. I think that sounds reasonable. So you're thinking about maybe the September working group meeting or something like that? Uh, for for, for kind of either either then or um, January. I mean, I'm not okay. necessarily rushing to do it, but okay. um, I'll drop you an email um, after this, and we can we can talk about it further if you're interested. I think we are Martin or yes, we? of course. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That that was Would be great. That was the intention of our question. Um, also, you, you can also reach out to us on, on Sulip, we're both uh, on Sulip, um, um, and uh, you can check us or right. contact us directly or using email or whatever. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So we do have four minutes left, and I see there are two additional questions now in Whova. Oh, yeah. So what do we have? Um, there is one question. Um, in order for patient data to be shareable, the policy needs to be reusable. Who would be responsible for keeping a catalog of policies? So who would be responsible? That's also something regarding more the uh, organizational side than the, than the fire side, so Martin. <laughs> Again, it's you. Um, I only can speak for work within the MRI. <clears throat> there we have a so-called task force, a constant implementation. And um, this task force is responsible um, um, to specify this kind of catalog of policies. And um, as our University Medicine Greifswald has um, several years of experiences in um, in content management we we made a proposal how the catalog could look like and um, this proposal was accepted um, slightly modified and is now the catalog of necessary policies to depict the MI broad content and if this task force also is responsible to create this catalog over time. Yeah. So does that answer the question? I hope so. If not, please reply, of course. Then the second question that's uh, still open, um, how is the consent, consent counterparty identified? Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, the consent counterparty, uh, you mean the hospital or whoever uh, this is about, right? Yeah, so uh, say for example, there's the first party, the, the patient, there's the, uh, the data, I guess, custodian, if you will, representing yep. the institution in which the data is being held. And then there's the, I guess, the recipient of the data, if you will. Um, yep. How are they uh, and, and maybe I missed this part. I'm sorry. Yeah, I think, yeah, Martin, ah, that's great. So, so you would have to set that up at that organization, yeah. at the, it's, let's call it the data custodian organization as an right. organization that would receive the, right. okay, got it. It, it depends, it depends, it just depends in which uh, context you're working, uh, especially um, uh, if you are in research, of course, that, that's a research study. So basically the patient uh, uh, gives us their consent uh, to mm -hmm. uh, use the data within the research study, even mm -hmm. may maybe even if they are given to other hospitals or to whoever is uh, involved in that study. And uh, on the other hand, uh, you have the organization uh, for which um, the, the consent is valid. And that's, that may be a hospital, that may be also a, a larger network of hospitals or uh, practitioners that do some research or just uh, do the care. Yeah, yeah. You know, typically the uh, authentication 
aspect of things is different, you know, is, is handled separately from, you know, the fire stuff, you know, this seems like an area in which there may be a little bit of overlap in that a lot of the OAuth implementations, you know, uh, authentication implementations have to do with what resources are available to, yeah. um, let's say, a particular client identifier, those sorts of things. Yeah. Is that something that's part of this consent profile? What um, what resources would be available? I, I would say, fortunately, it's not part of okay. <laughs> of this. Um, the, the consent profile, uh, of course, um, um, holds provisions or may is, is uh, allowed to hold provisions uh, in the case of uh, MII uh, specific profiles. Uh, this is a very specific list uh, mm -hmm. representing the, the MII broad consent um, paper mm -hmm. form or PDF form that has okay. been developed. Um, uh, on the other hand, you would have some kind of policy uh, decision point and after that, the policy enforcement point. Yeah. Uh, who would basically uh, take care of everything beyond that. Awesome, thanks. You're welcome. And, and awesome work, this is really, really cool. Thank you. <laughs> okay, folks, we are now at time. I appreciate both Martin and Stefan, thank you for presenting today. Thanks everyone for participating and we will post the recording within about 24 hours. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. You too. Bye-bye.